Welcome to a program featuring interviews of state and federal candidates, as well as the incumbents from districts served by Clatsop, Marion, Polk, Tillamook, and Yamhill counties. I'm Ruth McEwen, an advisory council member serving Northwest Senior and Disability Services Advisory Council. I want to welcome candidates, incumbents, and advisory council members to the 2022 Candidate Forum, which is sponsored by our Senior Advisory Council and our Disability Services Advisory Council. Northwest Senior and Disability Service is a local governmental organization that provides Medicaid, Oregon Project Independence, Older Americans Act, and grants funded programs. The mission of the Northwest Senior and Disability Services is to promote dignity, independence, and health, honor choice, and empower people. The assistance and support we provide consumers include information and assistance, in-home and community-based services, and financial and medical help, meal sites and home-delivered meals, option counseling, adult protective services, Medicare counseling, pure peer mentoring, money management, as well as health and wellness programs. Because of the number of state legislative districts that our service area covers, we have invited a large number of candidates to be interviewed. Each candidate has been given information on the format used in these interviews. Each candidate will be introduced by a member of the advisory councils. Then each candidate will have the opportunity to answer questions which will be timed. That way you, the viewer, can compare apples to apples. We thank these candidates for their willingness to share their views about services for Oregon seniors and people with disabilities. Hello, my name is Tita Montero. I'm a volunteer with the Senior Advisory Council at Northwest Seniors and Disability Services. Today, I'm interviewing Kevin Mannix. He is a Republican candidate for House District 21. I will be asking questions related to seniors and people with disabilities. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Tita, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be with you. So I have five questions to ask you, and um, we have uh, about, well, we have as much time as we can get through. I'll start off. Tell us about your platform and experience that would encourage a senior or person with disabilities to vote for you. Well, I think my experience is that, well, I know my experience was that I served in the Oregon House of Representatives way back when for five terms, 10 years. And uh, I last was in the legislature though, 20 years ago, I've been out of public service. I have a law firm in Salem. We've had the law firm for 36 years. I own it. I've got five attorneys working for me. And most of our practice uh, involves business law, but we also do trust and estates work. We do deal with seniors who are dealing with their estate issues, dealing with how they uh, plan to move their estates onto their families. But we don't have any direct legal rep representation issues in terms of persons with disabilities. My background there really comes from my service in the legislature when I served two terms where I was on the Ways and Means Committee and the funding for uh, these programs, programs for seniors, persons with disabilities and the like, um, all ran through Ways and Means. And so I had at least a, an education as to the financial needs and the implications. As to my program or my campaign platform, I'm talking about a return of common sense to the legislature. And I'm old school. I'm talking about 
conversing with one another, not shouting at one another, not calling each other's names, but identifying the issues that confront us, working together to find solutions, and yes, compromising to the extent necessary to get a result that works for the general community. And from that perspective, in my past, I've been a very effective legislator. During my 10 years in the House, I pushed through 135 pieces of legislation to be uh, passed by the House and the Senate, more than any legislator since statehood, since 1859. And I did this not because it was my way or the highway, but it was because I reached out and found other legislators to work with on given issues. So now I want to bring that old school experience back to the Capitol and talk to legislators, both Democrats and Republicans, about how we need to work together to solve the problems confronting our fellow Oregonians and to make a difference in their lives. Thank you. Um, Tell us what you know about OPI and how it improves the lives of seniors and people with disabilities. I think the most critical element here is the opportunity of people to help themselves, to help their family members, to be engaged, to take care of one another. And I, I emphasize that because I think that In the last 25 years or so, we've discovered that one of the best things we can do is help people be independent, dependent on the capacity they have to be independent. Some folks can be independent in their homes with some amount of outside support. Some need greater amounts of outside support. And it's a flexible program that addresses the level of need that the individual has. It's not one size fits all. I love the fact that it starts out looking at the individual and supporting the independence of that individual and then has a gradation of services and involvement. And yes, ultimately, some folks need to be in facilities where they can be provided with assistance, but we don't force people into those facilities. We assist them in getting there when they need to be there. And we also have a a gradation in terms of the resources that are applied. People that are financially more self-sufficient need to be carrying a larger part of the burden. And I think we need to be tuned into making sure that that works well so people of means do get the support services but are not getting, I'll call it a free ride. That is something that they can afford. But there are other people who are of lesser means who need the same assistance and we need to make sure we provide it to them. I think overall it's what I'll call a a program that allows a customization of care. And we need to make sure that we have the facilities and the staff and the program people to help make sure that customization is available. But we also need to make sure that the funding is there to make sure that we finance all of this. Great bang for the buck, uh, if, if we want to look at it that way. What matters to me though is the human resources bang for the buck. Great, thank you. How would you prioritize state funding, including funding that is matched with federal funds, such as Medicaid, for services to an increasing senior and people with disabilities population? I think that the smartest thing we can do is to maximize the amount of federal funding we can access by using our state funding. The uh, the bang for the buck is there. Now, We always need to be evaluating how many strings are attached. And we may have to be choosing among some federal programs where there are more micromanagement requirements in program A versus less micromanagement requirements in in package B and looking for the programs where we get the most capability for us to design what we can do for our seniors and persons with disabilities, but also maximizing the federal dollars. Now, in a perfect world, we'd have enough money to do all the match and get everything. In our less than perfect world, I would prioritize getting, putting up the match money where we can maximize our capability to do things. And uh, I'll say push back against too much micromanagement from federal rules. And by the way, I think the federal government's gotten better at this, but they're not perfect. Okay. During this time of increased risk of homelessness and food insecurities, what will you do on a state level so that seniors and people with disabilities no longer face a lack of accessible, affordable housing and receive appropriate nutrition? 
This is a complex problem. It affects all of our folks who are homeless, but folks who are seniors or persons with disabilities are the ones who are hurt the most because they're the ones who most need assistance in dealing with the issues that confront them. And when we talk about homelessness, we're talking about a range of issues. There are folks who are uh, drug and alcohol or drug or alcohol affected and addicted. There are those who are afflicted with mental illness issues. There are others who are simply economically hurt who are not in a position to afford housing. And there are some who can't find a job to fund what they need to do. The large group of these folks, there are folks who need an outreach program which is providing them with services, which is able to identify on an individual basis who needs the services the most and who is also going to be the most cooperative. Now, to be blunt about it, if we've got a 25 year old who is drug addicted and doesn't care and just wants to keep using street drugs, well, we're gonna to have to address that through another system. But when you have older people who are trying to deal with the limitations that they may have incurred over time as a result of their medical situation, yes, aging itself, disabilities, we need to be very creative and positive about working with the agencies that can most help these folks. And as to the housing issue, I like the fact that Goodwill Industries in Salem has come up with the plan for a cluster of homes in a, in a, in a nice housing area. It's on Market Street. I've looked at this. I've talked to our mayor-elect about it. I think it's a great model for what we could be doing where, as I recall, there's five or six cottages which have a courtyard, but each of the cottages is a home, but they've been designed so that low-income people can live there. This is an example of creative thinking. They've looked at the capability of these folks to afford housing. They've built that into the program. We need to multiply that kind of approach for folks who can still live in their own home with assistance. And that's a great way of addressing the homelessness where folks over time because of age and disability may have been forced out of their housing. I'm Now, I don't have the time to give a complete speech about this, but to me, it is a complex subject, but it requires that we have legislators who are listening to the people out there. Right now, I have hired a consultant who's going to work with me, it's not paid by my campaign, who is out there interviewing folks who are homeless to find out exactly what are the factors. We're trying to interview 160 people in the Salem, Kaiser, Marion County area in a gentle way. Uh, where, where are you from? How much education do you have? What are your medical conditions? Who's helping you with those? Do you have, are you signed up for the state programs? A comprehensive personal discussion. Why? Because it'll help inform me better about what's going on. Now, our friends who are providing services already will also be able to educate me about where we can make the biggest difference. And it's not simply a law enforcement issue. There may be a small amount of that saying to folks, well, you can't be here, you can't be there. But when we say that, where can they be? How do we provide the housing that they need? And how do we also provide the programs, services, and medication uh, treatment to help them be self-sufficient? And if not, how do we then address their needs when they can't be self-sufficient? It's uh, So I'm ready to dig in on that, but I want to be listening to the folks who are dealing with folks every day who are homeless. And yes, of course, we've already got a group and I'm speaking to it, which deals with folks who are seniors and folks with disabilities. And I wanna hear from you as to how we can best fashion a humanitarian positive response to a critical problem. Thank you. What would you do as a legislator to address the behavioral health issues that have been brought on by health issues and isolation related to the pandemic? That's a tough one because we still are learning what those issues are, but to the extent that uh, we're in this process of learning, we need to be listening to the services and care providers who are interacting with these folks to understand how they've been affected. I think isolation is one of the most difficult challenges facing folks with disabilities and seniors. And we need to make sure that our outreach programs have been beefed up I know that, for instance, Meals on Wheels is a wonderful interactive program. How do we make sure that as they develop information about isolation with a given individual, that we have the capability to carry on an intervention, a soft, 
positive intervention, not a hard one, to identify what issues are confronting that individual. And some of them may have issues that are a result of isolation, and we need to embrace them, surround them with love and comfort. And I think, and I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, but I think that will help ease the burden then of identifying what sort of additional services do we need. And it's going to mean human services, an interactive relationship with that individual. Not a phone call, um, not a form in the mail, uh, but real interactive relationships. And that means we need to spend the money to support the staff who can go out there and engage in this. And beyond that, I would add there are folks who are retired who are active retired, who may be willing to be engaged to support these programs as volunteers with some training. And how about coming up with a way of helping them? Can, do they have some extra medical insurance costs that we could compensate for them to volunteer to help expand our staffing mm. so that our professionals and our paid staff uh, can turn to some volunteers, a volunteer who might say follow up uh, on a visit when everything is seems to be okay, but uh, hey, Instead of waiting a week, every day someone drops in. Now, I don't have a scenario that's all set out yet, but I think we need to be thinking creatively about how we help our retired people who are active and capable to help those who are not do more of that. Well, some very interesting um, scenarios come to mind for me. Thank you. So we have reached the end of our questions. Um, thank you, Kevin, for spending a portion of your day uh, speaking with us and answering questions focused on seniors and folks with disabilities. Again, may, this may is I add something Kevin. Since we, since we have a little, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Sure, go ahead. Since we have a little more time, can I just add a wrap up message? Sure. First of all, I appreciate this interview and this opportunity to engage in some dialogue. Second of all, as a legislator, I realize I don't have the professional training to understand all of the issues that confront us in this area. And I do want to be hearing from those who do have that capability. Oh, sure, I'm a lawyer and I you know, deal with the world, but um, I want to emphasize that as a legislator, I want to be listening, not just talking. I want to be analyzing and I want to draw on the great information that our friends have put together. And when I was a legislator, I remember being very supportive of programs for seniors and persons with disabilities. I want to build on that. And I, and I hope that folks that are listening to this will understand that the label is Republican. The thinking is Oregonian and common sense. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, this is Kevin Mannix running for House District 21. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Godspeed. I want to thank the candidates on behalf of the members of the Senior Advisory Council and the Disability Services Advisory Council of Northwest Senior and Disability Services for attending our candidate interviews. Copies of the interviews can be checked out from Northwest Senior and Disability Services by calling 503 304-3451. Again, that number is 503-304-3451. We hope the information that has been provided will help you make informed choices when you vote. The Opinions expressed here are not endorsed by Northwest Senior and Disability Services. For more information or to get connected to services provided by Northwest Senior and Disability Services, please call 1-866-2000-2000. Again, that number is 1-866-206-4799. The Advisory Councils for Northwest Senior and Disability Services would like to thank Capital Community Media for the production 
of the forum. Thank you for watching.